drawing a scene is different to drawing an object even if the object is as magnificent as the Musée du Louvre because it's not just a description of a subject but it's capturing a story or part of a story at least. There's a wider embrace than just the object that we draw. This scene of the German National Gallery in Berlin for me does just that. It's not just a description of the building. The building in fact is even in the background even if it is still the dominant object in the scene but there's a story for me a memory that I wanted to capture of a hot summer's afternoon in Berlin where we were exhausted after walking in the baking sun and of resting in the cool shadows of these enormous trees with this beautiful encircling colonnade and this Roman temple like building rising up high on its platform golden in the sun against the clear blue sky and all around the bustle of people every sort of noise and people and family you can imagine so how do I capture it all the architecture the weather the gardens the crowds the feeling well let me talk you through it and show you in this video always helpful at the start is to focus on what exactly am I wanting to try and draw out of this scene. I want to capture the feeling of the gallery rising up high in this lovely open space and catching the light directly. And yet I also want to capture a sense of these big old trees casting deep shade. I also want to capture a sense of the hustle and bustle of all these people moving about. And of course, I want to be accurate in my architecture. I'm drawing a known building. What I particularly like is the way shadow frames the main subject. This is a favorite compositional approach of mine, where a foreground that wraps around the page is in shade or shadow, and the subject is further back in greater light. So therefore, I'm wanting to capture the size and the darkness of the trees, which I know is going to be time consuming, but also of these people in front who are all pretty much in the shade of these trees. I want them to be recognizable as individuals, but also somewhat of a dark block across the front to create this framing effect. Well, let's see how I go capturing all of this then, eh? I start my drawing in the center. I want to make sure I have room for everything because I want to include the whole scene. So starting in the center, I think maximizes my chance of doing this. I use all my usual methods of measuring the perspective carefully using my pen as a measuring device. And then I work across this colonnade. I also feel like the colonnade is going to be the easiest part of this drawing to draw according to scale. And then I can use it to measure the details around it, both to the sides, but particularly beneath with this rather complex uh, double stairway in the front. I can also use the columns to align the main people in the foreground. So as always, the first bit of the drawing really does take the longest where I'm establishing my proportions and scale. There is this overhanging tree that obscures the top left corner of the gallery. So I'm just going to do the faintest of outline there because I do need to measure other parts of the drawing from those details. But I always prefer to draw the foreground objects first and then sit the background ones behind them. I've drawn the front of this staircase at too steep an angle. The perspective is too great. So I have to make adjustments in a little while and you might notice me do that. Equestrian statues are always a challenge for me. I try and just focus on the shapes and not think of trying to draw a horse or a person on it. But I also try to position the head of the statue against the position in the column it is in the reference photo.
Although I'm enjoying drawing the building, I'm also impatient to start some of the other elements that will create the story of this scene. Now that the colonnade is drawn, it's a great help in positioning things accurately, particularly other parts of the architecture of the building, but also where figures go further down. Possibly the most useful point of the colonnade is positioned in the apex of the pediment. It's very easy to get this in the wrong place and it really throws off the perspective if we do. I also like to measure the angle of the pediment sides with my pen the same way I measure perspective lines. And now I just suggest these pediment sculptures without starting to draw figures in great detail. Drawing the buildings become much faster now, both because of my eye and my hand have warmed up, but also because I can position my pen far more accurately far more quickly with what I've already drawn. At this point I'm still thinking I'm going to use sketch marker for the tone and that was partly because there was so much tree. Just suggesting all of this detail. If you look closely you'll see how rough and approximate it is. With this right hand side of the gallery it's important to get the perspective lines correct because they're quite extreme and they add a fair bit of visual drama but I don't want to get the foreshortening wrong. I'm just suggesting the capitals here without trying to draw any one in particular. So I position these seven large windows in the base a little more carefully and I almost forget to put the end of this staircase in. Fortunately I see it when I'm about to start the windows. So now I start doing some of the figures. I'm using a 0 0.5 pen for the figure so that they're larger and they look closer. I draw the closest ones first because that will give me one extreme of the scale plus I need to approximately line up all the heads on the same line. start to position these uh, wonderful hedges that border the area and give some really nice dark shadows and it's as I start to put these shadows in I start to feel like maybe I'd like to just do this all in line again just do hatching and cross hatching rather than put tone in even though I know that will make the trees take a lot longer to do. These figures sitting in the gutter here again I'm just suggesting them I'm not getting caught up in trying to do figure studies. I start to push out to the sides of my drawing more. But now I'm thinking I need to establish a bit more of the framing before I can really do much more. So I start to look at my trees on each side and think about how will I put them in. I managed to get this perspective line quite wrong, if that's any comfort to you. With things like trees, silhouettes are particularly important. We can get lost in the foliage, but the silhouettes will stand out. So if we want to suggest a particular type of tree or of leaf, copying the silhouette carefully is the way to go. I go back now to the larger tree on the left hand side, which really is a massive darkened shade. But I do want to establish a few branches. I'm not drawing an exactness of this tree. I'm wanting really to capture the feel of the branches and of the canopy. By now I've worked out that I'm going to draw this picture completely with line. Clearly I'm having fun. I find that with large areas of tree canopy to hatch it works best for me to do some of it and then move on to something else 
go back to it, do something else, go back to it. I find I do a better job. If I try and do it in one go, I often get a bit rough and try and tackle too much at once, but that I take more care doing it in smaller bites. The lower tree on the right hand side is actually further away and so I use a finer pen for that and I use my heavier 0.5 millimeter pen for the tree canopy at the very top of the right hand side because that's closer to us. I'm using my 0.2 millimeter pen for this far background and for this building on the other side that's behind the gallery. In creating a sense of story in a scene, I think depth is particularly important because to have different planes of our scene it makes it easier for our eyes to roam around. We can, in effect, travel through the scene as well as just look at it. I'm up to now what I like to think of as the fun part or the really stressful part of getting the proportions correct and everything positioned correctly is done and I'm playing around with tone to bring the drawing to life. So tone, of course, at this point being applied by my pen. I accidentally pick up the 0.2 millimeter pen at this point instead of the 0.3. And so my tone behind the colonnade is a little bit lighter in effect than I was going for. At some point, I recognize my mistake. We end up reading tone in relation to the tone around it. So it's best to be modest with how much tone we apply and then to adjust certain parts darker. Once we get a better picture of how the overall effect is going, nothing's worse than going really dark in one spot and then deciding that hmm, it would have worked better if it was a bit lighter. It's just visually not fitting in with the rest of the scene. Got one last little figure on the right hand side here. Put some shade on the ground, which is an important part of creating this shadowed frame. I realize now that I haven't put the sculptures on the roof nor the flag. And now I start working on this tree, getting it looking as dark as I want it to be. Now the trees on the right hand side have much more sunlight falling on them. So I want to allow for that to get a sense of natural light falling. Now I'm adjusting the tones. Since I can't make them lighter, I'm darkening tones where I think it will help objects stand out more easily and create a stronger sense of drama. These figures at the front, I need to really darken substantially. And particularly the closest figures. Drawing's taking me just over three hours in real time to draw. And while it's had its moments, it's been a lot of fun and I'm feeling really good about it. I continue to darken parts just to tweak the, the contrast. It's important to keep stopping and having a look at what we've done so that we can remind ourselves of the overall effect and not just the part that we're working on. So don't be afraid of drawing a scene, but working out exactly what qualities of this scene you want to bring out, what emphasis you want to put in how you draw the objects. It's a wonderful way in which artists can go beyond what the camera alone can capture. Why not give it a go? G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. As one who normally is trying to capture the beauty of an architectural subject, to go beyond that 
and to try and capture something in a scene that's more of a story, more of a narrative, is a great shift of emphasis. Firstly, it means I'm widening my subject, going beyond the architecture to include other elements. In this case, the context, the setting of the National Gallery in Berlin. The enormous trees, the crowds of people, the things that for me, with my memory of the day, created the story where the building was just a part of it. And while the building requires just as much attention to accuracy, all the other elements are just as important and in some ways maybe even more prominent. I would have spent at least a quarter of the time doing the trees. Find a scene that tells a story, whether you've been there or not, and give it a go. And of course, have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.